I'm Roy Lee Lindsay with the North Carolina Pork Council, and I want everyone to remember, bacon makes everything better. Hi everybody, welcome back to the David Glenn Show, now seen and heard exclusively here as part of the North Carolina Sports Network. Please find more of our audio, video, and articles at our website, ncsportsnetwork.com. Our next guest, Boo Corrigan, comes from a famous sports family and has been a very successful athletic director at both the United States Military Academy and since April of 2019 here in our backyard at North Carolina State University. Boo's late father, Gene Corrigan, was a prominent athlete and coach before becoming the commissioner of the Atlantic Coast Conference and later the president of the NCAA back in the mid-1990s. This past academic year, our guest, Boo Corrigan, helped oversee one of the greatest overall seasons, meaning as measured by all of the school's varsity sports performances in the history of Wolfpack Athletics. And it actually marked the fourth year in a row the pack finished among the nation's top 25 athletic departments in an all-sports competition known as the Director's Cup. Over these last 12 months, NC State was the only school in the nation to have its football, men's basketball, women's basketball, and baseball teams all finish in the national top 25 in their respective postseason polls, and five different pack squads won ACC titles, women's cross country, wrestling, men's swimming, men's basketball, of course, and gymnastics. The women's cross country, country squad actually posted its third straight national championship as well. The pack just finished as the third school in history to advance its men's basketball team to the final four, its women's basketball team to the final four, and its baseball team to the College World Series all in the same year. That is a heck of a list of accomplishments. As we say hello to Boo Corrigan, welcome back to the David Glenn Show. How are you? I'm doing well, David. Thank you. And uh, my father would be really happy to be known as a great athlete. <laughs> for sure. So I appreciate well, that. And uh, it's been a heck of a year for the pack, for sure. No doubt. And as we get started, I've, I've asked you this question a couple times over the years. Please remind everyone, if I remember correctly, your birth certificate first name is Eugene, right? Yeah. What, when and why did people start calling you Boo? Yeah, it, it started when I was about six months old. And my father, uh, I'm named for him, right? Baby is seven kids, five, four other brothers. Uh, you know, I don't think he loved the name Eugene. So he was waiting as long as he could. He figured maybe if he did it, he'd stop having kids. So, uh, the, the, world, the world already had a pretty great Gene Corrigan. So uh, when I was six months old, they came up with Boo. And 56 and a half years later, I sit here as a guy named Boo. Has anybody called you anything other than Boo for 56 plus years? No. no Nobody. It, you know what? It just kind of works. For, for whatever reason, it works. And, uh, you know, proud of the last name, 100%. And... Uh, honored to be a Corrigan and love being a Corrigan, love being from a big family and wouldn't trade that for anything. I have a feeling that your answer to my next question, we could truly fill maybe a book or at least a half hour. I won't ask you to do that. But if you were to summarize one or a few of the most important lessons you learned from dad, Gene, given his life in sports, What's on that short list for you, given your success in sports? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things that he used to say when we were kids that, you know, always kind of stuck with me, David. And one is to, uh, it, it's better to remain silent and appear stupid than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, that, I think what that really means is, is be patient, right? You, you don't, don't feel the need all the time to act. Don't feel the need all the time to say something, let things play out. And I, I think if you look around here right now, um, there's a lot of patience with, with what's going on with, with our coaches, with our programs, with our students, to, to make sure that we're putting everyone in the best position that, that we can, that we're providing the resources, that we're being supportive, that we're relentlessly positive in, in everything that goes on. And the other is, you know, the two things you control are your attitude and your effort. And if you come in every day with a good attitude and you are working hard, I think it models behavior, 
right? Not so much, um, well, I mean, here in the office as well, but just kind of growing up in, in hopefully every facet of life, right? That you're modeling the right behavior as, as a husband or as a father or as a friend or or you name it. But, you know, I, I think those, those are the two main lessons that I take from it. With that kind of stuff in mind, you are in the midst of a heck of a run at NC State. Everybody, you know, we all have uh, recency bias, so our memories are best when it comes to Wolfpack basketball men, Final Four, Wolfpack basketball women, Final Four, College World Series and baseball. But this is really a four-year run at the very least during your tenure at NC State that might be the best four-year run in the history of Wolfpack athletics. How do you boil down the starting point for understanding this dramatic surge? Well, I, I think culture really matters, right, in, in what it is. And, and we've been really good over the years, and, and you've been following NC State for a long time, right? So yeah. we've been really good at, at hiring coaches and five years later bringing in someone else, right? And, and, and you know that repeat cycle, that wash, rinse, repeat wasn't working for us. So, you, you know, a lot of it has to do with that patience that I'm talking about. Let's figure out how do we make sure that our coaches are surrounded, by the right coaches, by the right strength people, by trainers and marketing. And, and, you know, our coaches really, at the end of the day, if they can concentrate on coaching, recruiting, developing, uh, maintaining, and, and mentoring, that's a pretty good day for a coach, right? Let us worry about ticket sales. Let us worry about marketing. Let, let our trainers do their jobs, right? And, and make sure that we've got a system set up. But, you know, it, it goes back to our coaches in the leadership that we have there, in the belief that they have um, in NC State as a university, um, in our academic people, in everyone across the board, buying into one vision. And, and that positivity does matter. I do believe that every day when I wake up, that if you come in with positive attitude, that's going to spread through everything. But in you know, it's hard not to think back to when we went through COVID Right. And that was a really tough time for, for everyone, like globally. That was a really tough time for everyone. And, you know, we came out of COVID. Uh, we had balanced our budget that year. We started off with a negative $22 million. Uh, we were able to balance the budget through different cuts, through our donors, through our fan base, um, through coaches uh, and everyone in the department taking pay cuts. Right. But at yeah. the end of it, we ended up balancing our budget. We did not lose a single job. And I think people really bought into what we were trying to do. And again, it goes back to the leadership of our coaches and really buying in. Long answer. I apologize for that. No, but, I get it. You know, it, it, it doesn't really happen overnight. Wolfpack AD Boo Cargan is joining us here on the David Glenn Show. I have followed the pack as a young journalist way back in 1987. And it was such a weird time culturally back then. Because soon after, you had the, the the Jimmy V end of an era, right? And then there was kind of a lost in the wilderness period. I won't ask you to go back 35 plus years, but how about taking me to the, the handing of the baton from an AD that I knew very well and, and had a great relationship, your predecessor, Debbie Yao, uh, to you, a guy I've gotten to know a little bit as well. And, and it just seems like you know, the Olympics are coming up. A, a baton handoff can drop and the fastest team of four runners can lose because of a bad baton handoff. How do you describe that culture you use, you, word you used earlier and what has seemed to be a seamless transition at NC State? Because she hired some of these coaches, you hired some of these coaches, but there has to be some con connectivity between uh, those two eras. Well, I, I think the connectivity is Chancellor Woodson right, in the entire university and understanding that athletics is important, right? You, you know, and, and uh, everyone uses the front porch yeah. analogy to the university. And, and, and while that's true, you, you think about, I don't know, um, you know, there's a whole lot more red in Raleigh than there used to be, right? I mean, the, the pride that people have in this university and being able to win, being able to win nine football games, being able to you know, have those four sports ranked in the top 25, right? To finish in the top 25 in the Director's Cup, five times in total the history of the program and four in a row, right? It, it speaks to the continuity that we have here, but the leadership of Chancellor Woodson is really what 
to me is what drives it from a man that, you know, is exceedingly supportive of what we do, um, but also gives you the rope, right, to, to go out there and do your job and, and challenge you on decisions that you make, but not make decisions for you. So, um, you know, the ability to work there uh, in, in there being with Chancellor Woodson has really been amazing. In sports, we talk a lot about impact players who make a positive difference. When it comes to our state's economy, the North Carolina pork industry is a true MVP. Each year, the pork industry plays an important role in supporting rural communities across our state. It contributes more than $10 billion a year to the North Carolina economy and supports more than 44,000 jobs. Learn more about their positive impact at ncpork.org. The North Carolina Pork Council, the foundational partner of the North Carolina Sports Network. I've always wondered how sometimes they calculate the value of a Final Four run. You'll, you'll see, you know, social media uh, value or free advertising, et cetera. I know we're only three months or so removed from your double Final Four run and that amazing ACC Men's Basketball Championship. Do you already have any returns in terms of like a surge in student applications or how your boosters are reaction or season ticket sales or name image likeness revenue type? Do you have any of that yet? Yeah, we, we, have, we have some of it. And yeah, I mean, the good thing is we sell out of football season tickets every year, right? You, you know, so from that standpoint, we're in a really good place. Women's basketball is already sold out. Men's basketball is up over, over last year. Baseball um, season tickets are already being renewed right now. I mean, one of the things we did before uh, we got here is we always waited probably six months before we started the renewal process uh, on a year-over-year -year basis. Now with football, we start in October. With men's basketball, we start in January. With baseball, we start um, at the end of April. So we're, we're ahead of the game in, in those terms. You know, this is such a dynamic area, living in Raleigh and new people moving in. And, and one of the things that we like to think about is how do we make NC State everyone's second favorite team, right? You're going to move here from California or Texas or Arkansas. You're not going to be able to go back every week, right, to those places. So you need to adopt someone. How do we make sure that they adopt red? So that's kind of the ticket side. I think next year we'll see from an application standpoint, really what, where that ends up. Uh, we did work with Wasserman um, this year, about a month ago, got a report that, you know, about $10 million in, in hard advertising, you know, to see NC State, to see Wolfpack well over a billion with a B, with a B. Wow. A D, with a D, that's a D. Um, <laughs> impressions, you know, on social media, you know, to see our, our game against uh, against Duke, uh, north of 18 million people watch that, uh, the highest rated, um, uh, I guess, Elite Eight game yeah. to, since 19, um, to, to see the ratings for uh, baseball coming out of the Super Regionals. We had the second highest rated game. Uh, in baseball. So, I mean, again, the, the ability to go out, right, and, and showcase who we are. And, you know, we're, we're a tough school for tough people, and we're proud of that, you know, and I think that's really what you see in all of our teams. Boo Cargan joining us from the NC State Wolfpack here on the David Glenn Show. Because my new, you mentioned COVID, it's, it's when I lost uh, the biggest media platform I ever had. So you were right when you said everybody was impacted by that uh, worldwide pandemic. But in our new company, the North Carolina Sports Network, we're only a year old. And that year happens to coincide with just crazy success for Wolfpack Athletics. So we have six main categories where we're handing out awards mm -hmm. for Athlete of the Year. And this means college, pro, it could be a Panther, a Hornet, a Hurricane, Wolfpack, obviously, Blue Devils, Tar Heels, and all the rest, large or small. And the Wolfpack dominated. 